Welcome to Photofines. I am your host Kevin and this week we are starting out at Splitsville which has been open for some weeks now. This is the bowling facility at Downtown Disney and as you can see it's got kind of a 1950s era decor and vibe to it. Now as we step inside you'll see that that kind of continues this 1950s look to it. The color scheme of beige and red here uh, and kind of red and white and a little bit of black everywhere else too. So uh, you can see al also from the beginning here that there are uh, scattered places to eat and some scattered bowling lanes. The bowling lanes are distributed throughout the facility rather than all being in one spot. Now here's a view of what it looks like just as you get off the escalator upstairs. Some additional lanes off to the side here. Uh, some pool tables on this side and then some additional seating over here. Uh, this is what that seating looks like. Uh, it's actually the booth seating that, f that you have for the bowling lanes themselves. So what they've done is taken the concept of the bowling lane uh, and taken those seats away that you normally see at a bowling alley and replaced it with dining seats so that it really is a, a very complete overlap between uh, a possible dining experience and um, a bowling experience the lanes themselves are, uh, of course, some of the draw. Now this is the view from upstairs in one of the five bars in Splitsville. I like the way it looks sort of in a different world here, kind of its own neon world. Uh, and this is uh, very much kind of transporting you somewhere else. I felt like it was not city, uh, city Walk in Hollywood. And this is the shop just in so inside the doors at uh, Splitsville. Now, this past week we were at uh, Imagination Movers. SeaWorld has been doing uh, Just for Kids promotion, which has um, Imagination Movers as well as uh, other acts coming up like Choo Choo Soul with Genevieve Goings and uh, Lori Berkner as well. So these are free included concerts with your SeaWorld ticket, and they take place in the indoor Nautilus Theater. Switching back over to Disney, this is the IBM Think area formerly the runtime area of Interventions West. So what they've uh, done is taken over one wall with the Think logo and display as you see here and then this back wall um, is really nothing now. This is where uh, the runtime adventure used to be and they moved the Rainbow Road a little bit to make room for everything. Now this is the exhibit itself over to the left and as you can see there are these monoliths which have some interactive touch screens on them and then a lot of the 100 logos around since this is the 100th anniversary for the company IBM. And then there's a bit of a timeline look to um, the exhibit around the outside. There's the beginning of the timeline. Now when you're at one of those touch screens, uh, you can move around a different kind of timeline to see about innovations and interventions, or inventions I should say. Uh, and here's an example of one. I, I took a picture of it of course because of the Disney looking monorail that you see up at the front. There's a movie around the corner from here. It says some things about um, what the world's resources are like and uh, what we need to do to preserve them. And as part of the movie, you come to this screen, which is a faithful recreation of a 1977 science film called The Powers of Ten. You can go find that on YouTube if you're interested. I appreciated how closely they reproduced the details of that little picnic scene without even calling attention to it as a, um, an homage to The Powers of Ten. That's what the theater looks like for watching that little IBM movie. Now, around the corner from here, also in Interventions West, the Great Piggy Bank Adventure has been here for some time, but this mural across the front has not. Uh, that's something relatively new and recent. Around the corner from there, or just on the other side of the Rainbow Road, really, uh, is the area once occupied by Rock and Robots. It was undergone renovation and turned into just benches, and now the benches are under renovation, and I don't know what's coming next. We'll report on that when we get there. Musée Paul is the new name for the restaurant Bistro de Paris. Um, Paul, of course, being Paul Bocuse, one of the main uh, chefs de France who is associated with the France Pavilion. So he gets the restaurant named after him. Now the boulangerie, the bakery, has closed in France, and this is a view of the new bakery. It's in the shop, and we're going to take a look at the shop first, and as you can see, they've kind of cleaned it up. They've decluttered it and removed a lot of the banners that were here in the shop area before uh, so that you could get a closer view of the, um, the bakery in the back, which kind of is set in into the back there. Now next to the bakery are two new bathrooms. They are both unisex or dual-purpose bathrooms. And this is what they look like inside. Again, you lock the door once, and then that's your bathroom for that immediate time. So from this view, the bathrooms are in the back over by this exit. Uh, but we're also taking a picture here of the metal gold-colored trays that they use here at the boulangerie. Salade niçois, uh, other salads, like a chef salad. Uh, you'll see a couple of different baguette sandwiches, the 
ham and cheese one there in particular. Uh, they continued with most of the desserts you're familiar with, such as the mousse, uh, the parfait, um, the croissant desserts as well. Uh, and they've got some new decorations around the outside walls of that uh, enhanced seating area. There was always a seating area here before, uh, but now the seating area has uh, tripled in size perhaps. It's even got some of these uh, very European type stand-up tables along one wall there. Now on our way out of Epcot, let's pause and look at this new um, vending station. Uh, this is electric umbrella in the background, so the shot was taken from the pin, um, the pin trading center area. Uh, and it's not in use, as you can see. It hasn't been in use much since the very crowded Christmas season. Uh, and it's a nicely themed, kind of covered area. I'm not sure why they're not using it, but uh, maybe there are operational problems with it. Now we've switched over to Be Our Guest. This is in the Magic Kingdom, of course. We've been here before, but never for lunch. So I've never gone through this walk away to go order your lunch food, and I'll take you through a few of the shots we find in here. So lots of suits of armor. And if you've encountered them before in person, you know that these suits of armor, they don't move, but they do talk. And in the middle of the um, alleyway here, you'll see the menu for the, uh, the daytime lunch menu, which ends uh, by mid-afternoon, 3.30, so they can get people out and ready for the uh, nighttime service. And there are the prices, as you can see. They're actually pretty affordable uh, for what you get. Now a little bit more about the suits of armor, and we're going to zoom into the last suit of armor on the right. Perhaps you see it already. This spot here on the pike is a hidden Mickey. Last couple of views of the suits of armor, and then we come around the corner to the room where you're going to order. Now, it's, as you can see, it's kind of richly appointed room. Lots of purples and deep colors, and uh, there are curtains and rich mahogany wood across the top. And you're handed one of these. They're kind of hockey puck sized. They're made of plastic. Uh, and they are, are called a rose, technically. So we come back to the rose in a second, we get a closer look. A few more looks around the room, including I want to call your attention to these characters, which are there on each one of the stations. There's um, Lumiere on station number three. And again, that fake fireplace, as well as a triptych um, where you can see the menu. So it's just showing you how deeply they, um, and how seriously they took the, the need to theme everything. Okay, so here is that, um, that uh, rose we were talking about, the hockey puck looking thing. Uh, this is an RFID device. It's how they know where you are and who you are and what it was you ordered. So when you come to the touch screens, um, you have to first kind of log in, I guess, with your RFID rose. Uh, and then later, they roll around um, looking for your rose with their iPods and iPhones. Uh, and they have the food with them, and then they collect your rose. So you really could sit wherever you wanted to in the theater, and, and in, in the three rooms, the rose room, the ballroom, and then the west wing, and they would come bring the food to you they, without a need to um, find out who you are or assign you to a certain spot. So let's have a look at some of the food items. There's the French onion soup. There is the turkey sandwich, which at uh, $10, or I guess $11, is an absolute steal. Just a fantastic... Um, really tasty uh, menu item that, of course, it completely fills you up. It's large enough for that, but uh, at that price point, uh, you would have expected something bland, and it was anything but bland. And it's strange that it was such an obvious-sounding item, turkey sandwich, but this is just bursting with flavor. And the braised pork had a lot of flavor. The pulled pork had a lot of flavor as well, another item that we do recommend. And the desserts were all wonderful. Fairly small, I suppose, but uh, at only uh, $2.50 each. Definitely something uh, we're going to be sampling at least going forward. And this caught my eye on the way out. The restrooms have their cute little signs, in this case themed like nights. So I'm curious to see if you would be able to guess where we are in this picture. It's a little bit dark. Maybe you can tell what kind of vehicle we're in. As we switch to a different picture, I think it ought to be more obvious we're in a boat. And very specifically, we're on It's a Small World. This is the finale of It's a Small World. We've just gone through the room of uh, white designs and decorations uh, from all the world, um, the various countries of the world. And we're in the room which used to be filled with colorful signs saying goodbye in multiple languages. As you can see now, there's nothing in the room. Uh, the room is um, painted black and all the materials have been removed. I have no information on why this was done, if it's permanent or if um, something new is coming here. I think it's probably a good bet that we're getting something associated with next generation, so something interactive maybe, coming to the last part of that room. That brings us to the end of this week. We thank you as always for your attention, and we'll catch you next time.